This is the Agribusiness Report. I'm Tony St. James, joined today by the Honorable Representative Mike Bost, representing the 12th Congressional District of Illinois. Great to see you. Well, Tony, thank you for having me on with you. It's really good to be here. You know, it's really been a, an interesting time uh, across yeah. our country and an interesting time for Congress as well. Are we starting to, to find a routine again? Oh, I hope so. I, I'm, I, you kind of get tired of telling people it's a new normal by doing all of the, uh, everything by uh, Zoom. You know, some, before I don't think we even knew what Zoom was, but now uh, we were having all of our meetings that way and everything like that. I hope that we get through this. I, I believe that we'll find a vaccine. We'll get through this and, and things will get back to not the new normal, but the real normal. When we talk about normal, I don't know if we can say renewable fuel standard, RFS, and normal at all. Right. Uh, though there would be the idea that would be normal. There's been some challenges here there over has the been. last years. Uh, what's happening? Well, front? well, first off, the EPA, we set a standard uh, that, that for renewable fuels uh, that would allow for and making sure that, that you know, there, there was a waiver process. However, we saw the EPA during the last administration allow for too much of those waivers. And so we watched actually this administration move forward and actually put to let, together a letter last year and said, don't go down that path. There was a reason why we put uh, the standards in place so that our renewable fuels as far as uh, biofuel uh, would, would be used as an additive and we would actually help the farmers in that way. Uh, there were a request for 54 um, uh, waivers uh, on this standard um, for, by the EPA. We sent a request not to do it. Last week they responded and the fact they would not do that. That allows us the opportunity to have about 15 billion dollars or 15 billion gallons uh, in renewable fuels that will be used. That's an advantage to our farmers and an advantage uh, to, the, to America as a whole, I believe. Sensible standards, I've, I've got gotten a unique situation in the fact that I have a, a uh, actually an ethanol uh, group uh, that is actually on the hill above uh, the Phillips refinery in my district. And those two work well together uh, fulfilling these standards. There's some arguments around this nation between other uh, refineries, but Phillips has done been really, really well and prefers to use the additive uh, that, that is necessary. And, and it's good to know that they actually, the EPA stepped forward and that this is, this is gonna be positive for the farmers. You talk about positive for farmers. This is, uh, I, I, it would be nice, I guess, if we just said this was a challenging year, mm -hmm. but there have been year after year of year uh, challenges for producers. Congress responded uh, and USDA stepped in with the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program or CFAP and that has now expired as far as sign up but now we have CFAP 2. We have that CFAP 2 that, that you need to, the farmers need to know and understand that the first CFAP was 16 uh, billion uh, the, the, the CFAP 2 is 14 billion and it, it also includes uh, relief for livestock and for non-traditional uh, or, or for uh, specialty crops. Um, and so uh, people can actually sign up uh, and, and let, me, let me give you an email where people can sign up and that's at farmers.gov backslash CFAP or CFAP. Uh, you know, for more in information they can check in that. They've got through to December 11th. Uh, to get signed up for that. I want to encourage the farmers to, to get online, find out about it, and sign up. Let's talk, uh, uh, we're talking about domestic issues at this point, but the ability to sell the product right. overseas or to our neighbors to the north or south, uh, pretty vital. We're implementing the USMCA. Let's talk about that one first. What do you see? Sure, sure. Let me tell you that when we worked on the USMCA, we as members knew how good of a deal it is. Uh, you know, you, you heard the president talk about how good it was. But, you know, we had been uh, under uh, NAFTA, had been really in a bind, especially our, our uh, dairy producers uh, with Canada and how that was dealt with. Also, the trade with, with uh can or with uh, Mexico was also a problem, but but just so you know, with the passage of the USMCA, which we sent a letter early on and argued early on because we could have passed it a year earlier, but the speaker kept dragging her feet, and and so through much argument, we finally got it passed. 
It's about to my dis to my district or, or to the state to the state of Illinois. It means about seventy thousand new jobs, good jobs, and that ability to trade the way we need to, not only in agriculture, but in everything else as well, but definitely in agriculture. So let's talk about the, the other big one, and that's China. Anytime we talk about sure. ag, we've got to include China. We have a phase one deal. What do you see there? Well, the phase one deal is kicking in right now, and it couldn't be kicking in at a better time. Uh, let me tell you that, you know, we, many of us were that have been around for a long time, especially Republicans, you're, you're scared of any argument with trade agreements, but China had been ripping us off for a long time. And I can remember going through this last year and talking to my farmers and they say, you know, we know the situation, we know how they cheat, but man, don't make this last too long. Let's figure something out. Here we are coming in, you know, harvest is starting and everything like that. And all of a sudden the, the, this is kicking in. And because of that, we are they're they're actually coming through and making those purchases driving and, and the costs are coming up uh i know soybeans are at, at a very good mark right now uh and and corn as well and and we're making those trades and that allows our farmers to have a little bit of security and not only that and, and you know i can't speak for the, all the nation's farmers but i can speak for my district we are having some really, really good crops. So most times it's like, oh, you know, we've got a great crop, but, but, but the market value is, it fell and, and, and the markets are down. And, and I don't know if even if I'm producing a, a large uh, crop, whether I'll be able to sell it at the price that I need to. Now I think this is going to line up that not only are they, the production is up and good this year, but also the price is up and, and the farmers hopefully will do very, very well. And that's what we want to see happen. Last one, I'm going to toss out at you because uh, farmers are optimistic. Mm -hmm. and, and I think Which doesn't happen quite often. Exactly. <laughs> so when we start talking about uh, just being optimistic, I'd like for you to look in the crystal ball. What, what makes you optimistic about the future? Well, let me tell you that as long as we continue to open up these markets, that our trade negotiations are good not only for farmers, but for uh, manufacturers and everything like that. I believe as we get through this COVID, and, and I do believe that we'll find a, a, a vaccine very, very quickly. Uh, I would hope that it would be for, before the election, but if it isn't, so be it. But, you know, we're a strong nation and we work together very, very well. Now, there are a lot of group, groups out there that are causing trouble and stirring, and maybe they're not happy to be in this nation. I know that the people that I work with are happy to be in this nation. They're happy to have a free market system and they're happy to have and the opportunity to pursue the American dream. That includes with our agriculture. Uh, you know, the, my farmers, all they wanna do is, is provide a living for their family, pass something on to their children and grandchildren. I think that, that agriculture uh, is, is in a situation where we've got to make sure through the laws in the United States that we position ourselves so we encourage people to stay in the business, which is sometimes pretty tough. Uh, to, for, for the new generations to work at the level that their parents have for years and they've watched that. But I, I see the hope that that's going to come to fruition and that's, that's, that's a good thing about living in this United States. He's the Honorable Mike Bost and serves on the Agriculture, Transportation, Infrastructure and Veterans Affairs Committees. He's a busy guy representing the 12th Congressional District of Illinois. And this is the Agribusiness Report.